Okay, it looks like um, Loretta with the COG has walked in as well as um, Pat Lincoln with CFL and Associates. So we will take up item number one, update on the Salt Missions Trail Scenic Byway Project. Good morning. Good morning. I apologize for being late. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the Salt Missions Trail Scenic Byway Project and I have a handout of my presentation this is the PowerPoint presentation I put together, but rather than bore you with a, a slideshow, I'll just hand you a copy of the presentation. Um, about a year ago, actually I think it was early this year, I came out to tell you about a project that the Council of Governments was initiating along the Salt Mission Scenic Byway Trail. Um, and I'm back to tell you where we are with that. Just to remind you a little bit about, about what we were doing um, the Salt Missions Trail Scenic Byway was established in the late 90s and in 1998 there was a core management plan that was put together by the current Scenic Byway Organization at that time. The Scenic Byway Organization um, is no longer active and because the core management plan is, is close to 13 years old, it's now considered out of date. It wouldn't be um, a basis for acquiring additional scenic byway funds from the Federal Highway Administration for funding for any projects along the byway. So the Council of Governments identified this as a need and um, requested Federal Highway Administration funding. We did receive that funding, it was about $55,000. The Council of Governments used local um, contributions to the COG to provide that local match for the, the project. The purpose of the project was to update the corridor management plan and use that as a vehicle to uh, put together or try to put together a sustainable byway organization and also to identify a list of prioritized projects in the plan as a framework for any um, additional projects moving forward. We've actually accomplished that and I'm here to tell you uh, where we are with that to give you a status report. Since I met with you, we've had, um, that, that meeting was uh, one of 14 introductory community presentations we provided. And we also had numerous one-to-one -one interviews, uh, small group meetings, additional presentations to other groups. And as a result, we identified 17 organizations that we invited to participate in um, an initial committee for the byway. The organization included, of course, you all, Mountaineer, um, Chambers of Commerce, Estancia, Edward, the land grant communities, just about everybody we could think of. Um, we've had six planning committee meetings between um, March and, and now, and the outcome of that process has been that the committee has identified a vision for the byway, and that vision is to protect and enhance authentic community histories and cultures along the byway. So it's, it's very, um, broad and it really emphasizes the authenticity of the communities and, and not trying to create a um, kind of a, a economic development tool that was not authentic to who the, the communities along the byway are. They've also identified six goals and objectives and we put together a draft narrative. I'm still um, working on the last details of that. And the revised map, and, the, and your handout also includes a revised map at the, at the, at the very last page. And the list of proposed projects, and they identified three different kind of categories of projects, a near-term, medium-term, and long-term, and then taken two of those projects and developed some preliminary proposals. And one is for a, um, a branding and marketing um, project that will identify a, what they call a, a brand for the area, kind of a, a single, um, identify characteristic that um, can be used on all the marketing materials for the byway. And then a first phase of a wayfinding system that would be fairly extensive. It's a pretty, um, I think, a, a pretty broad approach to um, a signage for the, for the byway that would look at not just providing signs along the byway saying you're here, but to provide uh, some context, some historical context, identify um, a way for people to find out more, and um, some information about events and activities along the byway that visitors can participate in. 
we all, they've also identified a proposed framework for maintaining momentum of what we have in place um, that essentially would um, provide for the organization not necessarily to establish a 501c3, but ask the Council of Governments to act as kind of the staffing for that and, and the fiscal agent for any future projects that any of the communities may not feel comfortable acting as a fiscal agency agent for. So the Council of Governments would be basically become kind of a backup to the organization and help keep it moving forward um, if we hit any bumps in the road. The goals that they've identified are, um, there are six of them. The first one is the largest. It's to share community history and cultures in a way that informs residents and visitors, honors the past, and serves as an economic development driver. And you can see, once again, this whole emphasis on honoring what's here, the authenticity of that, to um, provide visitors an opportunity to experience that without cre creating what several people on the committee have referred to as, we don't want to be Santa Fe. We don't want to be Taos. We want to maintain our authenticity, our um, more rural atmosphere. <laughs> the second one is, to, again, to retain, promote, and communicate local cultures. Um, this, one of the projects that related to this would be um, a curriculum building cult, uh, project to go into the schools and teach the kids about what's here and the importance of, of maintaining and retaining that, the value of it. The third one is historic resource protection, which is more focused on um, assisting people who have um, historic buildings to maintain those and identifying those as appropriate too. The fourth one is to establish the interpretive wayfinding the informational system. That's the system I talked about <coughs> a little bit ago. Uh, the fifth is effective marketing and publicizing a trail of the trail and events along the trail. And then the, the last one is sustainable byway funding. The idea here is to identify funding sources for providing um, money for marketing strategies, kind of low-cost marketing strategies, and also for local matches um, as future grants may become available. There's quite a list of potential projects, and they really range from general concepts to fairly specific um, ideas. Uh, one is a photo history project. We talked about um, working, or developing a website, um, updating the, the current map, and that's the first cut of that is that one is attached to, you, to your handout, updating the brochure that's out there. Some kind of a pan byway festival once a year of, to celebrate the cultures or celebrate something else that, that may be of interest to all the communities. Um, there's an existing um, Spanish language history of the land grants that there's been some interest in, in translating that into English and then incorporating that possibly into the curriculum that we've been talking about um, to get that into the schools and, and help local children become more aware of, of um, their heritage. On the abandoned railroad track, of course, is um, in here. Uh, restoring the, the neon lights in Route 66. Um, there was a proposal for a 150-mile flea market along the entire byway. A mural project like Mountaineers, either using paint or um, the tile that, that they've been using on some of their facility, on some of their um, buildings. You can see there's a quite a quite a list, quite a range of, of ideas that, that the committee came up with. This entire list is, is included in the draft plan. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm putting the fi finishing touches on that, the designated as editor. Uh, and we're, we hope to have that up on a website um, later, late next week. Which leads me to the next slide and the next steps, and, and really the key to why I'm here today, uh, to let you know about um, the fact that we're releasing that for public review here shortly, and then we're going to be holding some public meetings. And we're going to pass around the flyer for those. The public meetings are scheduled um, in November. They're all in the evening. We're trying to, this is my, my first step in getting the, the word out, um, is to come out and talk to you all, to each of the local communities about this. I was in T. Harris last night, and Mountaineer last week. We're going to Willard and Estancia and Edgewood next week. Um, there are three meetings. Uh, the first one is in on November 9th in Mountaineer. The second one is um, on the 15th in Edgewood, and then the third is here in Estancia on the 17th of November. 
we are um, using, we're trying to position that kind of in the middle of the public comment period, um, which will be really formally started once we release the draft document. And we'll be taking comments through November 30th. And then those comments, I as staff will be compiling those, taking those back to the committee, asking them um, for direction as to modifying the plan if we need to do that to respond to that input. And then I'll, I plan to come back to you all, to each of the local communities um, early next year, asking for your acceptance of the plan. So my goal today is really to, get, to start getting the word out that we're going to be um, starting this process real soon here. I'll be providing information to the local newspapers. Don't want to do that until we actually have the plan up on the website. And, um, and try to work with each of the communities and the chambers to, to get, to use their communication channels to get um, information out about the meetings. I've spoken to Joy about posting some flyers and, and she's been very helpful with that, so I'll post the flyers here for that. Um, to Harris has said that they can post it, they can put it in their newsletter, um, that talks about Mayor and to Associate about putting some information into the, their, um, I think their water buildings. So I think that we have a good chance of hopefully getting um, a good cross-section of people at the, the meetings. If people can't attend, of course, they can provide comments um, by email and through the website. So we'll help try to, to get as much coverage as we can. Uh, with that, I just stand for questions. Thank you very much, Loretta. That was very informative. You pumped a lot of life back into into that project, and awesome. I'm glad that the committee is together and you guys are, are plugging ahead. Are there any questions from the table? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. We'll thank make you. sure that we spread the word about the meetings, and we um, look forward to yeah, seeing what else that comes up. Just, just a minute. Um, so thanks again, Loretta. Now I will ask for questions from the audience in regards to this item. George. It wasn't a question, but for getting the word out, the co-op has billing all over out here. If you hadn't considered checking with them, they may be able to help you as well with your notices of, with CNME. Okay, thank you. Any thank other you. comment or question? Okay. Thank you, Loretta. We appreciate you being here. Great. And I apologize for being late. No worries. Thank you very much. We will now go to item number four, letter of agreement between Torrance County and the town of Estancia for the teen outreach program. Commissioners and county manager, I also apologize for being late, but I was at the DWI book panel, which is now relocated back to Moriarty, so it's a longer drive. And if you have not had the opportunity to see the new renovated um, magistrate court, it's amazing. You should all avail yourself of the, the chance to visit. It's a wonderful facility. Um, you have before you in your packet, um, and this is the fifth year of the agreement between the town of Estancia and um, Torrance County, and it lays out the, um, essentially, um, responsibilities of each of the entities, and the Torrance County part stipulates that their uh, um, portion of the agreement will um, be carried out through their contractor, which is DFL Associates. Um, essentially, the town is providing the facilities and material support, and um, we are providing, um, the um, Towns County is providing all of the programming elements. Um, we have some new, new parts of the agreement this, this year. The town has asked the Teen Outreach Program to take full responsibility for um, the food pantry, which we are excited about. We initially started that, that project with Roadrunner, um, I think four years ago now, and we're happy to be stepping back in um, with the new guidelines on the top programming. The, um, the young people involved in the program will actually be responsible for all aspects. The planning, the interface with Roadrunner, the setting up of the distribution and the publicizing of the, um, the days when the pantry is open and then they will be reporting to the Estancia Town Council um, a couple of times a year on that. 
Um, they also are taking on um, an extension of what they started this summer, which was the movie nights in the park, family movie nights in the park, and they're going to be doing that um, again, and they'll be doing it in the community center in um, Estancia on Friday nights when there are no home games or, or big conflicts. Um, and so that's also a nice new piece of the arrangement. The rest of it is pretty much the same as um, has been in place for the <coughs> previous four years. So I would ask for your approval of the agenda. Thank you for your presentation, Pat. We're now at the table for questions. <coughs> Pat, you said this is the fifth year? This will be the fifth year. Will be the fifth year? What are what are your results? What are your percentages of decreasing pregnancy? Um, we are dependent to a certain extent on the state for um, that information. Um, they work with the Teen Pregnancy Coalition and that's collected through the epidemiology office. Um, we had had a spike about um, four years ago. There's a, you know, about a three, two, three year lag in the collection of those statistics. Um, but in the last year, there had been, uh, in the last year collected, which would be 208, if I believe, uh, that's been reported, there had been a decrease again. We do, however, know, and again, we only operate the program in Estancia. We're only funded for, for one program. We do, however, know that um, there have been um, some increases in um, pregnancy, and we know this through the schools in uh, Mountaineer and in Estancia um, for uh, last year and this year. And so that's some areas of um, concern. Um, whether or not those individuals have been involved with the teen outreach program um, would be um, private information because of the nature and so I can't really disclose that. But um, the the program is really preventive in nature. <coughs> it is um, based on three components. One is an actual um, education component which encompasses um, reproductive health education. And usually that is um, done through our public health nurse. Um, another is a service learning component that um, involves things like the food pantry project, etc. And the third component then um, is really a more of a skill building program and there are some individual um, activities and lessons that are developed along that, um, that area of the, of the program. We use the Wyman curriculum. It's the curriculum that was selected by the state. It's a um, nationally endorsed model. And so all of the funded programs in the state of New Mexico follow the Wyman curriculum. Okay. I respect tremendously what you do. And uh, due to the fact that I'm very simple, do you think the program is worth Do you think it works? I do, and I'll tell you why. Um, we're fortunate in some respects because this is a small community. I mean, Torrance is really a small community. And so um, while the, the, um, the actual data is very important in terms of establishing credibility for the program, there is a, a lag in the argument upon the state. But on an anecdotal basis and in terms of really being able to see on a daily basis lives that you're impacting, um, it's, it's really quite evident. And mm -hmm. I would um, really encourage anyone to get involved either on a volunteer basis or just to participate in some of the, the activities. It, it really is life changing. And right. we have several of our early participants that really um, would be the first to tell you that and you know they've gone on to pursue education and that that may not have happened that that intervention in their life. Great. Great. That's all for me, Chair. Great. Any questions? All right, well thank you very much, Pat.
Um, we'll now ask for a motion to approve the letter of agreement between Torrance County and the town of Estancia. So moved. A motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Doesn't look like there's any comment or question from the public. Okay. okay. We'll now go to item number six. Updates. Who will be the first with an update today? Valerie. Valerie Arevalo with the Torrance County Project. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I had put in your packet um, just kind of an update. You had said you wanted some sort of quarterly uh, review of how the program was going. So it was kind of like a challenges and changes and kind of bullet points. Um, and I'm actually here to answer any questions you might have about that. So it's basically an overview of how the project office had evolved into being a part of the county, as well as what we're doing in each program. Well, your report is very well written and very detailed, and I've gone through it. Is there any highlights that you would like to share of things that if you've seen happen um, what, I, what I'm seeing as the office is really becoming um, very, we're working very well together, it's very cohesive. Because we're a small staff, everybody does a little bit of everything. And so we have been able to really maximize how much we can do by doing that. For instance, I'm working in domestic violence home visiting and I'm a determiner for presumptive eligibility. So most of the staff can do all of those things. DB is pretty much Roxy and myself and Patty Louise, but we work really well so that we're covering in the office all the time. The other big thing that we've found is being in a small <coughs> office, we're doing a lot more outreach, which has been like a blessing in disguise. We're reaching more people. Um, in fact, at the Domestic Violence Task Force yesterday, I took the opportunity to explain to everybody how the project office is kind of the umbrella over the DV, the home visiting, and all the programs. And that's what we're presenting to the community now, and it seems to be really working, because people are calling us as a resource and referral group for the county. And that's what we want. So. That's great, Valerie. I'm glad that the good work that was begun there continues to yeah, be there and be taken to the people. Yeah, that's great. The other thing that I just wanted to bring to your attention is um, we're getting lots of good training, which is always good. Uh, the New Mexico Coalition Against Domestic Violence had an ideas conference, and Roxy and I were able to attend that. Um, also, our home visiting program had a documentation training back in September, which all of us attended. Um, and then we also have, uh, see, we have this one thing Terry Alvarez, who does our family services, asked me to let you guys know is she's really started up, uh, doing presentations for programs providers and their staff meetings was an idea that she took out. She's already been to the health department. She's been with, to Valencia Counseling. Um, and we're just going to different people during their staff meetings and talking to them about the program. So I thought that was a really great idea she had and it's working really well. Um, we have uh, coming up um, the NMPCA, which is our where we get our Medicaid, our opportunity to provide those Medicaid application services. They have a fall outreach coming up this month that we're attending. Um, also the home visiting quarterly meeting. And then October 28th, we're going to a joy of parenting training, which fits really well with the home visiting program. Wonderful. So we're staying really busy. Well, thank you, Valerie. If you need anything from us, please let us know and keep up the good work and please pass that on to your staff. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who would be next with an update? Michelle. The sheriff's department um, had two subjects that we arrested on Tuesday, October 14th, for a pretty substantial metal theft ring kind of thing at CNM. It was a generator site uh, uh, outside of Moriarty, and um, by our covert cameras, we were able to catch them. And, That's great. And uh, they're in they're in jail now. Um, we also did the Pinto Bean Fiesta, the parade. Our officers walked the parade and we handed out 500 bags. They were meth awareness, Halloween safety, 
um, bags, and that was, I'm getting good perception on that. And then we're going to be doing the pumpkin chunking, and our junior deputies are going to be involved in that also, and we'll have a tent up here in Estancia. And then um, on her heels, I don't know where she went, <laughs> um, the domestic violence requirements, um, we met with Roxy and have come up with a new format for release of offenders. Um, we're making sure that the notification of all victims, um, what we did was we typed up what we need in the office from the other departments, including our own um, in the county. And we have been pretty successful now. We have um, <clears throat> a list to go by when they're arrested that we're able to get a hold of the victims. That, that had kind of been a, a situational thing that we didn't always have the number or the, the address or whatever. So now a no victim or no offender is let out until we notify the victim for sure that the um, offender will be let out. So, and then um, the deputies are also going to start carrying packets that domestic violence has put together for the, um, for the victims. Um, it'll help them with shelter and, and just notification of where they can go for help. So our, our deputies will start carrying those also. Well, that's wonderful. I'm working collaboratively always. Yeah. <coughs> better. So we appreciate it. Any questions from the table? Uh, a comment on your covert operations. Uh, if you have had the opportunity to look at the clarity of the pictures, they were able to take a picture, pure dark, no lighting or anything, and the picture of the thief was so clear that the Sheriff's Department posted out uh, pictures everywhere in businesses and handed out pamphlets looking for him and he was able to be caught in another county. Mm -hmm. Without this uh, that you guys have been working on, uh, I was amazed at the clarity of it. So I started being very careful what I did. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> you must have done yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Sheriff, and to the entire department. Thank you very much. Who's next with an update? Go ahead. I'll go after you. On the abandoned railroad track, of course, is um, in here. Uh, restoring the, the neon lights in Route 66, um, there was a proposal for a 150-mile flea market along the entire byway. A mural project like Mountaineers, either using paint or um, the tile that, that they've been using on some of their facility, on some of their um, buildings. You can see there's a Quite a, quite a list, quite a range of, of ideas that, that the committee came up with. This entire list is, is included in the draft plan. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm putting the fi finishing touches on that, the designated as editor. Uh, and we're, we hope to have that up on a website um, later, late next week. Which leads me to the next slide and the next steps, and, and really the key to why I'm here today uh, to let you know about um, the fact that we're releasing that for public review here shortly, and then we're going to be holding some public meetings. And we're passing out the flyer for those. The public meetings are scheduled um, in November. They're all in the evening. We're trying to, this is my, my first step in getting the, the word out, um, is to come out and talk to you all, to each of the local communities about this. I was in Harris last night. In Mountaineer last week, we're going to Willard and Estancia and Edgewood next week. Um, there are three meetings. Uh, the first one is in, on November 9th in Mountaineer. The second one is um, on the 15th in Edgewood, and then the third is here in Estancia on the 17th of November. We are um, using, we're trying to position that kind of in the middle of the public comment period. Um, which will be really formally started once we release the draft document. And we'll be taking comments through November 30th. And then those comments, I as staff will be compiling those, taking those back to the committee, asking them um, for direction as to modifying the plan if we need to do that to respond to that input. And then I'll, I plan to come back to you all to each of the local communities um, early next year asking for your acceptance of the plan. So my goal today is really to, get, to start getting the word out that we're going to be um, 
starting this process, we'll soon hear. I'll be providing information to the local newspapers. You don't want to do that until we actually have a plan up on the website. And, um, and try to work with each of the communities and the chambers to, to get to use their communication channels to get um, information out about the meetings. I've spoken to Joy about posting some flyers, and, and she's been very helpful with that, so I'll post the flyers here for that. Um, to hear us, he said that they can post it, they can put it in their newsletter, um, I talked to Mountaineer and to Asuncio about putting some information into the, their, um, I think their water buildings. So I think that we have a good chance of hopefully getting um, a good cross-section of people at the, the meetings. If people can't attend, of course, they can provide comments um, by email and through the website. So we'll help try to, to get as much coverage as we can. Uh, with that, I just stand for questions. Thank you very much, Loretta. That was very informative. You pumped a lot of life back into into that project, and awesome. I'm glad that the committee is together and you guys are, are plugging ahead. Are there any questions from the table? I don't know. Uh, no, okay. Well, thank you for being here. We'll thank make you. sure that we spread the word about the meetings, and um, we look forward to yeah, seeing what else that. comes up. Just, just a minute. Um, so thanks again, Loretta. Now I will ask for questions from the audience in regards to this item. George. It wasn't a question, but for getting the word out, the co-op has billing all over out here. If you hadn't considered checking with them, they may be able to help you as well with your notices of, with CNME. Okay, thank you. Any thank other you. comment or question? Okay. Thank you, Loretta. We appreciate you being here. Great. And I apologize for being late. No worries. Thank you very much.